Proteo will always have a special place in my heart for being the first video of mine to really blow up, and even with the questionable build that I use in that video, her strength is undeniably out of this world. So let's get into it. Arguably Protea's strongest ability, and maybe one of the strongest in the entire game, is Blaze Artillery. Artillery functions similarly to Zaku's Grasp of Lock, who I just made a brand new video on. Go check it out, link in the cards right now. Anyways, casting will have Protea dismount the turret located on her waist, deploying it mid-air where it will hover during its duration, auto-firing at any enemies within range of its 130 degree cone. You can have three of these turrets active at any time, with them firing at three shots per second. They are plasma charges possessing some very unique properties. Bolts deal a base 500 heat damage with a guaranteed status proc upset element to a target and any enemies within 2 meters. More importantly, these projectiles have infinite punch through, retaining all aforementioned functions and playing into their admittedly broken damage scaling. As Blaze Artillery strikes enemies, each successful hit increases damage additively by 100% per enemy struck. Say one shot strikes 10 enemies, that would constitute a 1000% damage increase, taking our base 500 heat damage to 5500, though in actual gameplay, numbers get a lot higher. Unfortunately though, putting an entirely unmodded and unbuffed blaze turret against these steel path gunners doesn't turn out so well, leading us to our first manner of increasing their damage. As I just said, striking multiple enemies per shot is very advantageous for artillery with the infinite punch through, making grouping abilities a quite powerful source of doing so. As I'm sure you've seen elsewhere, this is traditionally performed with larva. While I'm sure using your subsume slot to turn your turret from that to this is far from a bad idea, why even take it in the first place if we don't have to? Nautilus with its precept cordon replaces the larva and any other grouping so effectively, it's kind of insane. I'm sure you're well aware of this build by now, but for those who aren't, on cordon activation the closest enemy within 30 meters of Protea will be used to determine the placement of cordon's pull, being 5 meters out from your frame in the direction of the closest enemy. Following this, all enemies within 30 meters will be pulled 15 meters towards that point over the span of 1 second. This pull does go through any obstacle and uniquely does work on Eximus units. With a cooldown of 15 seconds, that seemingly makes this strong grouping redundant, yet with Manifold Bond's primary effect of reducing ability cooldowns by killing enemies with 3 or more unique statuses, it will cause this pull to activate passively almost every other second. With this grouping considered, our middlingly average turret has become significantly more powerful, almost killing these heavy gunners during its lifetime with the subsequent heat dot finishing the job. Though as I just mentioned, Manifold Bond requires enemies to die with 3 unique statuses, and Blaze Artillery only provides one, so a primer must be used, the epitaph being by far the best here. Modding just Viral onto our epitaph satiates the 3 status requirement, as the weapon also force procs cold on every shot. Besides that, Viral is one of the larger buffs we can give to artillery, one stack equating to a 100% damage increase, with subsequent procs up to 10, increasing this by 25% per, capping off at 325%. Paired with our grouping, our still unmodded turrets can reliably kill these gunners now, yet we're nowhere near done. Artillery deals heat damage with a guaranteed proc of it as well, making Archon Vitality a perfect match for it. Vitality functions by causing any heat proc dealt by an ability and only abilities to be doubled. This does not directly buff the damage of Blaze Artillery, rather making the dot produced by it twice as strong relative to normal, or just doubling its damage. In combination with our next method, this results in the heat dot killing enemies before the turret can. Heat Inherit is confusing, but also by far the strongest method of buffing heat dots currently around. With an infinite cap, continuously applying heat to an enemy will both add a stack and refresh the duration of all currently active heat procs. Interestingly, the modded heat damage, faction damage, and status duration are entirely governed by the very first heat proc on an enemy, with further stacks taking these values into account regardless of where they come from. Considering that all abilities are considered as having 100% heat damage, and are obviously unable to be modded with things like Banes, Applying the very first heat proc with your own weapon modded towards those stats will massively increase your damage, and I mean massively. With Scorch and Primed Heated Charge, the additional 225% heat damage is added onto the base 100% artillery consists of, multiplying its damage by 3.25x for the dot. 
Furthermore, if the very first heat proc applied by our epitaph is a Bane mod, this will be carried over to all further instances, and considering that Bane's double dip on statuses like heat, the damage becomes absurdly strong. Our epitaph is as shown, with both Viral and Heat, alongside Galvanized Diffusion and Lethal Torrent for more additional multi-shot and fire rate. You may be asking why Galvanized when we don't actually get any kills with Epitaph, but because we are applying the very first heat proc with it, kills by the dot are then considered pistol kills, triggering diffusion. Finally, primed fulmination for an increased AoE, making mass priming far easier. That finishes our section on Blaze Artillery, but don't worry, Protea isn't a one-trick pony, ahem, <coughs> Frost, as the rest of her kit is equally powerful. Grenade Fan is a multifunctional ability with an offensive and defensive cast. While the offensive slash grenades are quite powerful, for all intents and purposes we don't need them, leaving only shield satellites. Casting will have her fan out four in front of you, subsequently hovering in place. You, allies, or even companions moving within range of these will cause them to begin orbiting the corresponding entity, instantly restoring 500 shields at base and providing 50 more shield points per second, capping out your frames over shields. Considering that the shield regeneration is always active, taking small amounts of damage does almost nothing, and in the case your shields actually break, Protea will get a 5 second shield gate. On break, satellites will double your current gate duration, and since the shield gate changes adjust at 1150 shields to give a max 2.5 second shield gate, this means with enough strength, any satellite pickup will grant an immediate 5 second shield gate, the strongest in the game. This level of survivability is unmatched by any other Warframe and makes one of the best DPS frames the absolute best at surviving while doing so. Absolutely insane. Protea's third, Dispensary, strays away from the insane survivability and damage towards a more support-oriented ability, as if giving all your teammates 5 second shield gates wasn't strong enough already. Casting will unfurl the compacted Dispensary on her waist into a floating station, warping pickups into existence every 3 seconds. At first, this order will go Empowered Health Orb, a Universal Ammo Pack, following with an Energy Orb. Collecting one of these will have the Dispensary replenish it, starting a 5 second cooldown before the next replenish. Additionally, each of these pickups has an at base 25% chance to drop a second instance of themselves on spawn and replenish, though mainly, this is useful for the Empowered Health Orbs. With each giving 100 HP, this in tandem with Equilibrium and its natural energy spawns makes it quite an effective energy management tool, with strength increasing the chance for double drops, giving the potential to regen 220 at once, its importance is increased alongside obviously increasing satellite shield regen and blaze artillery base damage. Now we haven't covered one thing, one very important thing, our helmet ability of Roar. Roar is without a doubt the strongest helmet we can put over her fourth mainly due to both its faction damage status and ability damage buff. Roar is hit with a pretty hefty nerf when being subsumed, but this can be largely ignored due to Protea's uniquely powerful passive. Every fourth ability cast will be granted a free 100% bonus ability strength, signified by this graphic residing over her weapon's UI. Considering that Roar snapshots your current strength on cast, using a few abilities before triggering this one will grant it a total 403% strength, so strong that your turrets no longer need grouping, and if you do group, well, yeah. Enemies kind of just evaporate with over 1 million damage heat procs. And the same goes for Eximus units. This damage is on another level, and to make it even crazier, heat status Blaze will armor strip all afflicted enemies by 50%. It just keeps on getting better guys. So what exactly is the build? Let's check it out. Many people say that strength is an unnecessary stat on Protea due to her turret scaling, and I disagree with that. Considering the base damage of 500, scaling up to say 40 would increase damage by 4000%, or give you a final value of 2500. Now let's set our turret damage to the proposed 300%, and our damage becomes 1500, making the same 4000% scaling increase it to a substantially higher number at 61500. Combine that with the absurd numbers given by Roar and the safety from shield satellites, and it becomes even more worth building into. Obviously, Equilibrium must be slotted in here. Besides strength, duration is a very important stat for Protea, mainly due to increased duration granting her turrets more time to stack their damage, and of course being nice for less casting on the rest of her kit. 
Archon Vitality can be left at rank 0 as the health benefits are not needed at all here and the passive effect does not scale with rank. The slight bump in range is just to increase how far her turrets can reach and improve scaling, and your aura mod can be anything, though I like corrosive projection, while an Exilus as prime sure footed is expected. Rolling guard for safety, and your last arcane slot should be efficiency, raising your duration by another 36 points as long as your shields are active, which is no issue with Protea. While the main use for our companion is definitely the grouping, it has a few additional things we should definitely mention. Considering that we rely on health orbs from dispensary and natural drops, having your companion generate more through synth deconstruct is QOL that I cannot ignore. Weapon wise, the Hellstrom is by far the best for doing so, having a high base status chance and most importantly, being AoE. Its base fire rate is very low so we stack all 3 fire rate mods here, building gas and electric to prime as many enemies as possible for the mod. We can also use Reinforce Bond to provide additional fire rate towards our epitaph, with Calculated Redirection making it so that anytime your companion picks up a shield satellite, the Reinforce Bond buff will be triggered, functioning the same on them as it does for us. And back to the companion build, here are the rest of the mods. This last slot can be whatever you want, I just didn't want to reformat and mess up my more traditional builds. That closes it out for Protea everyone. Honestly, she's definitely a contender for the strongest frame in the game only being taken down a slight peg because she doesn't have any looting abilities, yet is so strong in every other category that it almost makes up for it. Also, how was the editing in this video? It took a pretty sizable uptick in my second Hydroid video a little while back, and now I hope that you guys would consider my style and format to be the best in the platform. That is certainly what I aim for, at least within the build space. Regardless, thank you so much for watching, your support really means it all to me. Many more of those thanks to my supporters on Patreon and YouTube. If you'd like to go check them out, links are in the description where you'll find you get my videos a whole day before everyone else, and your name up on screen with these cool people. Thank you to Aware, The Mad Monk, Scotty Nose, Sage, Intellectual, 3000, Airdis, Boogie, Cozy, Aqua, and Lexelli. Your support is very, very appreciated. I hope this video was informative and helpful, and I will see all of you guys very soon. Peace.